Test anxiety can hinder academic performance, so a researcher wants to compare the effectiveness of three treatments to reduce test anxiety. The procedure is used on five different students. Use the resulting data below, the Friedman FR test, and a 1% significance level to test the claim that the three different methods reduce anxiety equally. So we're told that we need to use the Friedman FR test here at 1% significance level to test the claim. So test the claim. It's a hypothesis test clearly using the Friedman FR test that the three different methods reduce anxiety equally. Okay, so in other words, we're going to say that their median uh, reduction is the same for each group, right? So let's express that claim symbolically right now. So the claim here is going to be that the median for the first um, treatment, and the first treatment here is going to be beta blockers, valerian roots, and meditation. So we'll use B for beta blocker. The second median will be for valerian root, and then the third median will be for uh, meditation. Okay, so there are your three techniques basically listed there. And we're saying in this thing that all three methods reduce anxiety equally, so the median reduction would be the same under the claim for H, or FR, sorry, excuse me, for the FR test. All right, now for HO and HA, we're going to look at the claim here, recognize that there's all equal signs, so that means the claim and HO are the same. And then for HA, it's going to be at least one, at least one, median differs significantly from the rest. Okay, so at least one differs significantly from the others. All right, and then finally from there, we want to express our significance level, which is 0 0.01, and then we're going to start manipulating the data. So we're going to rank the data. Rank the data within the blocks, right? Within the blocks. Okay, so that's our next step of the problem. Now, when we look over here at our data, and we actually take a look at it, we see that the data itself has five blocks, and those are the subjects that are involved in the study, and then we have the three different treatments, right? Okay, so we have five blocks that we're gonna have to rank the data inside of. That's actually a pretty easy task. Let's go ahead and, go ahead and do the ranking now. What we're gonna do is we're just going to go right across in the block and rank them one, two, or three based on their size. So I'll rank this one one, this one will get the rank two, and this one gets the rank three, right? One, two, three. All right, in this row, this is the smallest value, this is the next smallest value, and this is the third smallest value, right? Then we have um, 3.9, 4.1, 4.2. So again, smallest value, next smallest value, right? Largest value. Smallest, next smallest, largest. Um, smallest, next smallest, largest, right? So those are our rankings right across the rows, right? So 1, 1.3, 2.7, 3.1, 3.6, 3 3.9. So all these are ranked correctly, right? 3.9, 4.1, 4.2, 4, then 4.1, then 4.3, 2.2, 2.8, then 2.9. Okay, so I ranked them all correctly. Now we're going to get the rank totals. So let's get the rank totals for the beta blocker category. That's 6, and then another 5 makes 11, and then 11 and 3 make 14, right? Then we'll do the same here. We have 2, 4, 6, 8 plus 3 is 11. And then lastly, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the rank for the meditation category is 5. So remember what this is. This is an anxiety level on a visual analog scale. So after taking the treatment, that's the resulting anxiety level. So you can see that the smallest rank total is the meditation value. And so that would mean that essentially that produces the um, it looks like, it appears that it produces the least amount of anxiety. So after you've done the medication, meditation treatment, you seem to have less anxiety than the other methods together here. But of course we have to know if that's a significant difference, and that's why we run the hypothesis test. Okay, so let's go ahead now from here and take those values, and we're going to put them into our test stat equation. So remember for the Friedman FR test, the test stat is as follows. Test that is going to be 
12 divided by the number of blocks times the number of treatments times the number of treatments plus 1. All that multiplied by the summation of the rank totals squared, right? So that's from uh, j equals 1 up to k, the k treatments, right? Then all that will be minus 3 times the number of blocks times the number of treatments plus 1. Okay, so let's work out that Friedman FR test stat. So the formula is going to be 12, the number of blocks is 5, there are 5 subjects, those are our blocks, the number of treatments is 3, the number of treatments times, or plus 1, excuse me, is 4. Then we're going to have times the summation of these guys squared, so that'll be 14 squared plus 11 squared plus 5 squared, right? Minus 3 times the number of blocks, which again is 5, times k plus 1. k plus 1 in this case will be 4. All right, let's work that out on our calculator and see what it gives us. So we'll have 12 divided by parentheses 5 times 3 times 4. Close up the parentheses times, open parentheses again, 14 squared plus 11 squared plus 5 squared. Close the parentheses, minus 3 times 5 times 4. Okay, so after entering all that in there, we get the answer 8.4, 8.4. Okay, so there's our Friedman test stat. Our next step is to compare that test stat against our chi-squared critical value. Let's get another sheet of paper out so we can start beginning to do that. Okay, so let's look at our critical region and our critical value. So it's a chi-squared distribution for this test statistic, so we'll draw on the chi-squared curve. Shade the right tail because that's where the rejection region will be. And we're going to be looking for the cutoff region or the beginning of the rejection region down here on the number line. And that's equal to chi squared alpha k minus 1. So we're looking for a chi squared alpha k minus 1 critical value. And for us, that specifically means since alpha is 0 0.01 and k here is 3, that it will be a 0 0.01, comma 2 critical value. So let's go to the chi squared table. We're going to look. 0.01 up, and we're going to look up 2 degrees of freedom, and that will give us the chi-squared critical value. So we're on the chi-squared table looking at 0.01 with 2 degrees of freedom. We get the answer 9.21034. Okay, so our critical value turned out to be 9.210. Now our chi-squared test stat, which is actually the same as our FR test stat, is 8.4. Now that number lands here in the white space, so we're going to say do not reject HO and therefore do not support HA. If you look back at our claim, our claim was HO, so we're going to say we do not reject the claim. The sample data the sample data does not allow us to reject the claim. And this is the idea that the claim is that all three methods produce the same um, median anxiety level or exact or gets the median anxiety level down to the same level. So of course, you know, we're doing these methods to reduce anxiety. So this uh, claim is basically saying that the median for each treatment is the same, which means after performing the treatment or taking the treatment, um, the median anxiety levels remain the same. And this sample data does not allow us to reject that, even though it clearly seemed like meditation was the better choice based on the numbers we saw in the columns. The data is not strong enough to support the idea that at least one of them differs significantly from the others. So basically at this point, um, we have to wrap it up and say that you know, the sample data does not allow us to reject the claim. But you might be thinking, hmm, if it was a more powerful test or a more powerful procedure like the ANOVA randomized block design procedure, then perhaps at that point we might have been able to reject the null hypothesis.